guess they couldn't be back out here, so they called me in. I've, <laughs> I have been a little slow lately on work, so anyway. Some of this dirt is just really tight right on top, but once you get through that, it's not too bad. But this is the kind of dirt that you can blow the top of it out just real easy. Uh, you got to really be careful on the first six inches or so. You can see it's hard but I got some nice sharp teeth that makes a big difference a lot of people don't change teeth near often enough uh, I don't think but we're digging uh, three foot nine and this has got to be pretty close to right because they're putting a uh, carton form or a void box in the bottom, so you have to be able to fit that box down in there. So, we've got to be every bit of three foot nine, maybe a little bit more would be better. But, I started out, uh, duck a little bit here this morning but a lot of this was already done when I got here so but you'll see a difference I think between my ditches and the other guys ditches here it's okay to take pictures of bad ditches if they're not yours and yours look better <laughs> that's always kind of been a joke I've had people people ask how I get my ditch is looking so good I just tell them don't, don't take pictures of the ugly ones well anyway takes a little work to make them look right but it's worth it um, it really don't take a whole lot longer I mean it takes a little bit longer Maybe sometimes, I don't know, but the, the deal is if you're ripping the sides off the top of the ditch, you end up moving more dirt, so you end up, you know, actually taking more dirt than you need to take out, and it takes a little longer to dig more dirt, so there's a trade-off. I've never really studied it, I've never really set a timer or anything, and uh, trying to see this this guy wants to go through here I never timed it to see if he you know if you save enough time to make it worth it but I really don't think you do I think you're better off to dig it right you're saving the people concrete a yard of concrete these days is 120 bucks most places. So if you say somebody you save somebody a yard of concrete over a day's time, that's a, that's worth an hour, you know. If that's what it takes. But I don't think it takes that long really. But this is a little school add-on building. Or add, they're adding on to a building here. They got piers, so we're digging around rebar and uh, just kind of a typical commercial job. They built the pad up the select field. They over excavated first and then come in and built this up. They did a pretty good job compacting it, it's pretty tight. Pretty good stuff. But I've been uh, doing some dozer work. I've had oh, a couple of decent little jobs with it. So 
so it's it's paying off to have it going. Probably should have had one years ago. But I'll tell you this: a dozer is a lot more maintenance, a lot more. You spend a lot more money than you do on them than you will a, a backhoe. Uh, you're just wearing out more stuff. So. I think uh, dollar-wise, a backhoe can make more money per hour. Maybe I'm not charging enough, I don't know. But, uh, this one might be wider than three foot nine here. It looks like it is. It's uh, quite a bit wider. But like I say, you got deals like this. Blew the side out there. I could rip through that a lot faster, but it would sure make a mess out of it. That, you know, like I say, it, it pays off to do it right. Take a little extra time to do it right. Uh, the ditch over here to my uh, left that has uh, the yellow plastic, it was already dug out. I dug the one coming up to this corner. dig that one. The guy that dug it, he kind of blew the top out of everything he dug out here. He's a good operator. He's a company man, though. He works, you know, he just works for this company, so he don't have to worry about competition like I do. But they must be keeping him busy. They've got him on another job somewhere. That's a job I'm not sure I'd want to have. I don't know that I'd want to do this job just solely for one company. I think it would take a lot of the fun out of it. It would just become more monotonous. And uh, I think when you're not digging, they're going to expect you to be doing something else. And that's the part that, you know, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. I mean, I'm, I don't have to work every day to make a living, so it's not a bad deal for me. I've been working on the little 930 case, and that's that's been enjoyable. I've been having a lot of fun with that. So anyway, just thought I better get on here a little bit and show you one of the projects I'm on. I think we're probably about deep enough there. Let's see here. Maybe a little bit too deep. Not bad. They come in and drill piers and pour them before they dig the footing. And then that, that way everything ties in on top of the, the pier. I have 
be widening this out on the outside edge a little bit. And they might need to go a little wider on that, I don't know. I think we're good. Got to set in an angle here because we got a like I say we got piers to jump across and some ditches that are already dug out. But I don't know that I'm gonna be here all day. Doesn't look like I've got enough to keep me busy all day here. One of the hardest things about keeping grade in, in these situations is a lot of times yeah, I'm going to back up for a, bit. a lot of times that separation between the over excavated dirt and the new pad is an inch or two and it, it doesn't always stick so a lot of times you uh, get right down to that last inch you need to pull out of there and it, it shears off about two or three inches so you can kind of see some brown dirt down there a little bit of gravel that's the that's where they started to that's the bottom, that's where the bottom of this red select starts. Never experienced that. 
that's a shame because work ought to be enjoyable a little bit. I mean, it's still work. It's still a job. Don't get me wrong, but... If there's a job that you like to do and you enjoy it, Don't take it for granted, that's for sure. Because I've done a lot of jobs that I hated, didn't want to do. Matter of fact, when I started out running a backhoe, I didn't like it that much. I'd rather have been on a dozer or a farm tractor. But some jobs you don't realize how much you like them until you get into them and you get get to doing it and then uh, you know when that happens you look back and you say man I wasted part of my I wasted part of my life there hating my job and I shouldn't have been hating it oh yeah we can bust that off real easy right there this stuff these corners are going to be kind of tricky to keep intact. I'm going to go ahead and chisel the top of that off there a little bit. When you're digging this stuff like this, it's best to give yourself some room. Or I mean, you can't do it if you're just digging in one bucket wide, but if you're digging wider than one bucket, in my opinion, it's better to dig the side out away from the corner first that gives your dirt a little bit of room to move and tends to help you to keep that corner from busting off I don't know if that makes sense to you or not but if you dig that corner side first your dirt really don't have anywhere to go and even a lot of times even if I'm digging one bucket wide I will try to dig a little bit wider when I'm coming up to a corner. Not much, but just enough to try to give my, my dirt a, a way to get out of the ditch without ripping that top off or the corner off. So it takes a lot of patience. I mean, footing work's not something you just get in your machine, run full throttle, and just blast through it. I mean, you, you can do it that way, but... Generally, it doesn't turn out too good. I've had people comment on some pictures I post saying, man, that just that must take forever to dig like that. Well, It takes, like I say, it takes a little extra time, but I've never had anybody say you're too slow. Hurry up. That's, that's another nice thing about footing work is guys chasing you in the ditch tying rebar and you'll feel like you're under a little pressure but it's not the pressure like you get on some jobs you know with, where you're moving millions of yards of dirt that kind of pressure I'd rather not have It's pretty old in a hurry. Dust that top off a little bit. You gotta be real careful on them corners like that. Not bust them off. Plastic they're putting down, they, they 
put that down. Some jokes, they spec that. It's a vapor. A vapor or a moisture barrier, I guess. And what they'll do, they'll come in before they pour their slab and they'll put that underneath the slab too. Thing, digging around piers is, is tedious. I mean, you, you, you can't just get in here and rip through it because you know you're going to hit concrete, you're going to hit steel, you got to be ready to stop your bucket, you know, in a split second. Otherwise, you're tearing stuff up and breaking rebar or bending it or breaking your teeth on the concrete. It's not just it's not just wide open running machines fast as they go. And I think that's one reason I enjoy it. Is uh, you know there's jobs where you have to be non-stop all day long, just as fast as you can go. And sometimes digging's that way. I mean sometimes you're you know like I say if you got a lot of ditch to open up and you got guys following you tying steel keep you hooked up all day long pretty hard but a lot of times I don't run my machine real fast I mean I'm, I'm running a little slower than normal right now but like I say we're dealing with a lot of corners and stuff like that so Let's see if we're wide enough you know, when you're cutting these ditches out wider, if you start getting them three or four inches too wide, that wastes a lot of concrete. I think that was a thumbs up. Like a sewing machine, I guess. I don't know. 